Well, see, I don't know which camera to look at. <laughs> okay. Looking at the C930. Hello there. Jim Howard in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, May 3rd of 2018. Uh, it's about 33 minutes after midnight, so it's, um, let's see, go over here to the, it's Thursday. I have a doctor's appointment on the 21st. That's with the cardiologist. I go in and first they, uh, I have a pacemaker in me. They have me lay down in the, I forget what they call the department. And they take the, the data out, put it in the computer of the, uh, the pacemaker. Uh, I volunteered years ago to be part of a study also, so they're using that data for I don't know what purposes. Um, but the data is out. If When I go to the doctor's office, uh, then when I go over to, I leave there and I go to the, down the hall to the cardiologist, Got to be careful I don't hit the mute switch here. I, I hate that when I make a video or do something and really mess up bad. You know what I mean? Where it's wasted. Uh, when I go down the, uh, you know, they have a questionnaire. Have you had chest pain? Have you had uh, rapid heartbeat or anything like that? I don't know why they ask because, well, of course, they give that to everybody who, you know, some people are not people that have pacemaker. But, you know, I've gone before. My, my heart was pounding. And then the cardiologist looks at the, now your heart wasn't pounding. Uh, I kind of wonder, I mean, they get all the data about my heart rate, exactly. They know the battery, too, how long is left in the battery, all that type of stuff. I kind of wonder, how much can they tell that I am doing from the don't it doesn't matter to me, but and I'm sure they're not gonna you know they're doing this uh, data or whatever they're not gonna release my name when I'm gone they're not gonna say uh, uh, on uh, May fourth of twenty eighteen at two a.m. Jim Howard's heart rate shot up a lot and was up there and came down what could he have been doing well he could have been doing he could have been uh, with a girlfriend or a boyfriend or he could have been by himself I kind of wonder about that but I've never asked the uh, the doctor just how much can you tell from my uh, heart rate can you tell I'm on a treadmill or Treadmill. The only time I was on a treadmill was when I had a day, long time ago, a stress level taken where they put you on this treadmill and hook you up and everything. And they have to have a cardiologist there with you. You know, not just a tech, it has to be a cardiologist. And then they raise up the board you're running on. They had to stop it early for me. This is when I was still working back in the late 1990s. They had to stop the test. Uh, my blood pressure went up my heart rate went up everything they had to stop the test cardiologist says that's a sign that you haven't been really exercising that you're not I don't know I thought uh, walking around the hospital and out in the parking lot and all that type of stuff was exercise for you know 40 hours a week or whatever I don't have a lot of, I just went to the mailbox a while ago. This is a little, let's see. I think this is, you know, labor unions I think should be trying to organize Amazon and Lyft and Uber drivers uh, into a union, but I think they'll be very unsuccessful for a number of reasons. One, Amazon and Uber and the others will fight back unbelievable uh, ways. Uh, 
and the workers are, especially the Uber drivers and Lyft drivers are, I think they're, they're not, they wouldn't go, maybe the Amazon workers might. But uh, I think, you know, I think the Uber and Lyft drivers would uh, be more independent. They're, you know, they're uh, independent contractor. They start when they want to start. They stop when they want to start, all this type of stuff. I think they'd be really hard to organize. Plus, two, they know that, uh, of course, that'd be a good reason to have a union. They know that <laughs> Uber is eventually going to, and Lyft is going to replace them with, you know, automated automobiles. Uh, but that'd be a good reason to have a union because uh, when that time comes, uh, seniority should work if, you know, if, if somebody is a driver and you wanted to take one of the positions that will become available and you have seniority. Uh, and I'm not sure what kind of jobs will be available. What do you think? I, I'm thinking that, like Fort Worth, I'm in Fort Worth, so when they replace the, and they won't replace them all, you know, at the same time, it'll be a gradual thing, but when they replace them, I think those cars, you know, they pick up somebody, uh, an automated car will pick up somebody, take them someplace, drop them off, and then go pick up somebody else or whatever. But if certain conditions happen, that vehicle, you know, if the sensors sense, hey, this car smells, you know, this car smells, you better take it to the, or we got indications that something's been spilled or, you know, whatever the sensors do. And of course, there'll be probably cameras monitoring, but there wouldn't be enough people to, but so it's, you know, the cars are going to have to go to, and I don't think they're going to go to one for Fort Worth, to one location, pull in, and there'll have to be somebody that, of course, they'll be scanned in, but still somebody there to uh, visually look at them. And there'll have to be a few people there that are going to clean the vehicles, although there's some, you know, there'll be a thing they can drive. Just think of all that, you know, the car will drive through, it will get cleaned outside automatically. That's not a problem. Uh, how much cleaning can they do inside auto? I don't know. But there'll be some jobs at these certain stations, you know, a town, north side, south side, east side, west side, center, and the vehicles will go there. There'll have to be somebody there. Have to be a probably secure, of course they'd have, you know, fences up with barbed wire and cameras and whatever stuff. Probably have to be a security person there to make sure somebody just doesn't come in and, I don't know, take the computer out of the, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I'm, uh, uh, 77 years. I'm old. I'm not sure how, but I'm sure how much I'll see. But it looks like I'm going to be, you know, maybe be around long enough that, um, um, I will see the drone Uber choppers. Uh, that's coming for sure, that are going to pick up somebody and then fly them to some place and drop them off. I'm curious as to how that's going to, you know, that's going to work. I'm guessing that they'll have to be, say I wanted to go, which I, why would I want to go, I mean, I'd want to go by the vehicle. I wouldn't want to fly, but uh, I mean, I'd like to fly, but wouldn't be any, what would be a point in, well, maybe to the airport. Can you get, can you, you know, well, you wouldn't want those things flying too. It's going to be interesting. Uh, but, you know, they'd pick you up. <coughs> the, the flying thing would pick you up. Couldn't land right in front of, you know, if you want to go downtown to eat at uh, Fort Worth's best steakhouse. Well, unless they have, uh, if it's a new building or have, where the drone could land on the roof, if it supports it, which it would, it wouldn't be very heavy, but still it had to make sure. And then if there was, you know, couldn't have you get out of the thing and then 
fall off the edge and there'd be a lot of things to take in consideration. That'd be one thing, yeah, landing on top of a building and then you could go down or they could have a parking lot and one area would be fenced in, their parking area, one area would be fenced in so that a driver doesn't park a regular vehicle in there and then the drone could come down, let the person out and uh, you could go in that way. So it, it, that's going to be interesting too and I think I'll be around maybe, you never know, be around for that. Um, I'm a big fan of labor unions, but wow, it's just people in other countries, you, uh, people outside the United States don't understand that, well, I think you know about the fight for, you know, basic human rights that unions waged, you know, workers have, you know, eight hour work days because of union workers, people that they got their heads bashed in by company thugs and by uh, guards that were hired and even the even the US military on at least one occasion bombed uh, workers who went on strike someplace they came out and bombed their, their families you know the workers and their families actually uh, workers were hanged for things that they you know for so there were the struggle for, and then union. Then you have like uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt coming along and saying, you know, that unions are important and the unions have rights or whatever. And then gradually, and then unions were strong when I was uh, when I was a kid. You know, there were jobs at TWA in Kansas City, Missouri, General Motors, Ford, uh, factories, uh, and then when you, you know, when you grew up, there was a job for you. Maybe you'd be working the same place your father, you know, worked, or maybe his father worked, get good paying jobs. Uh, some of them, you know, difficult, some of them tedious doing maybe the same you know, putting a tire on a vehicle one after another or doing something. I worked all those jobs. I worked, uh, I never had a problem. Um, you know, when I, I got out of high school in 1959, uh, I never had a problem. I went to welding school. Well, first I went to, re to real estate school because my dad wanted me to. I didn't want to. Uh, then I went to welding school and had a job ever, you know, uh, one union place after another union place. Uh, there were jobs. Now things are different. But people in other countries, well, then you have Ronald Reagan, President Ronald Reagan, when he came around. Uh, <laughs> President Ronald Reagan is a hero to Republicans here in the United States, to the to the right wing. He's, you know, uh, he's their idol. And he was not, not an evil, bad man. Um, but Ronald Reagan uh, used to be a union leader, a union president of uh, a union uh, and he was you know also governor of California and what have you but he was a union leader of a union he also uh, was uh, for Ronald Reagan his hero was Franklin D. Roosevelt as were many people back then there was he was their hero. But Ronald Reagan was also, uh, you know, Republican and indoctrinated in, you know, anti-communism and uh, that type of stuff. So he uh, was a union leader who uh, 
turned in and gave information uh, about his fellow workers and union people to the FBI. He was an informant for the secret informant for the FBI. Uh, then later, when he was, you know, when he was president, he took great pleasure in uh, destroying a very strong union. Of course, they they're stronger now than you know. He destroyed the uh, air traffic control union. Uh, he they went on strike. Uh, he told them they weren't supposed to go on strike. I'm not sure. Probably there was because of you know they were air traffic controllers. There probably was a rule regulation saying you cannot go on strike. Anyway, he fired them all. Some of them went back and said, we're sorry, and they got their jobs back, but a lot, most didn't. And he put the air traffic, he put the safety, but it worked out okay because we didn't have, but he put for years and years and years, I mean for years, because it takes time to train every air traffic controllers and there's, you know, he put the flying public at danger, at high risk, and there were problems, but he lucked out. And that, that, but he also sent the word to, I was alive then, I remember, uh, uh, he sent the word out to the companies and corporations. Okay, this, you know, government, the federal government is no longer uh, for workers. And we have no problem at all. Crush the unions, crush the workers' organizations, and the company started doing that right away, locking out employees and doing all types of things. So things have changed. And unions did a lot of um, stupid things that they shouldn't have have done. Uh, not with the not what the Republicans think not communism or anything like that. They just didn't do, in my opinion, things that they should have done and they could have done better. They got just stuck in a, in a thing of what worked, you know. Employee gets hired in, employee joins a union, employee pays union dues, uh, union makes sure that employee doesn't get fired unless they deserve to be fired. Of course, the Republicans and right wing say, ah, oh, a you know, you have a union and then you can't fire, you know, an employee and he can be a mass murderer and a cannibal and you can't, no, no. If somebody is hired in and they violate the rules and regulations and they do, th and, they, and the, you know, supervisors write them up, they can be fired. I, I was responsible for firing a few people. We didn't have a union, though, but we do have D.D. the cat. Dee Dee jumps, comes in here and visits me looking for a plate with food on it. She doesn't find a plate with food on it, and then she'll probably leave unless she wants to be in my lap for a little bit and be petted. She likes to be petted, but she likes food more. There she goes. Bye-bye, Dee Dee. Come back. Maybe next time there'll be a plate. And she's gone. So, let's get off of not exactly politics, but I, I just want to peep out. You know, if you're if you're in Sweden, Denmark, and uh, socialist or you know uh, countries, and even Germany, France, and most of the civilized world, you really don't know what the poor workers here in the United States put up with. Uh, you may have heard a little bit about like health care. Oh, man. Like when I grew up and uh, during World War II, my father and mother were uh, building Liberty ships during World War II, uh, welders, and were members of the Boilermakers Union, International Brotherhood of Boilermakers, Iron Ship Builders, and Blacksmiths or whatever. And years later, I, you know, was also a member of the Boilermakers Union and the United Auto Workers and what have you. 
But um, there I again was going to go someplace and then I had to tell you about that and I uh, forgot what I was going to say. Um, I am using right now um, Manicam. And I think I'm using it a little bit better than before. And so I'm working. This is a little bit of an. It's all every time I do a. It's because I don't do things the same way. And because I'm always trying different things. So every time I do a video, it's a little bit of a, uh, an experiment. And I tell you, a lot of you, most of you probably are not interested in which camera is being used or what software that I'm using. But then there are a lot of you who make YouTube videos and, other, and who want to have an idea of what I'm doing. So I'm using Manicam, which I've used from time. Problem with me also is that I am always changing things around. In fact, if you watched a video a day or two ago, I had a my ASUS 27-inch monitor here, but over here I had the uh, extra wide 25-inch uh, LC monitor. Now I have two of the ASUS side by side, both 29 both 27 inch and uh, what I'm uh, what I'm doing is I have I upgraded by the way Manicam didn't really need to but I just up paid the money to upgrade it man this thing keeps I need a I got a hook here someplace I think this thing keeps I'm kind of afraid to hold it afraid I'll hit the button and turn um so I have the control for uh, Manicam over here, so it doesn't. In the past, you've seen it here in a corner, and you'd see me going and clicking something or whatever. But now I can go over and change uh, cameras. You'll know I'm doing it, though, because of my uh, inability to do two things at the, at the same time. So... Um, You'll also notice I don't have my Panasonic camera hooked up to in there. It just, so I could have three cameras going, just doesn't, just doesn't work out. So I'm using the two USB uh, cameras. Um, so... You remember I was um, talking about buying a 27-inch LG 4K uh, camera, and I just couldn't bring myself to, uh, and there was two of them, as you can see, the D58 for 344 and the D68 for $499. I really wanted to go with the, you know, the cheaper one on the one hand, but then I wanted to go with the uh, D68, the more expensive one, has a really nice stand uh, for it. And that was one, and some others, but that was one reason I wanted to go to it. But then on the other hand, down here, I was thinking, man, a 34-inch wide monitor I could have like four screens, on, you know, on there. What you're seeing, the screen you're seeing, um, I could, man, this is driving me crazy. That's something I need to work on, don't I? That, that, I've got to choke myself. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I would be able to have four screen you know one could be the video and i could have three other screens that you could be seeing with information i wouldn't have to switch you know 
So I don't know if I put it on here or not. There's I don't need it. I have a I and I help stop me from buying something I don't need. What I do need is a UPS thing. Uh, we're gonna have you know summer weather here before long and uh, have some power surges and what have you. And I need a UPS. That's one thing I should be getting. But um, the and that's over there on that uh, camera over there. That's on the. I finally have the nice head for the. I told you about that. The tripod that's uh, fluid motion, or whatever. Uh, my son, my grown son who lives here, and we share the expenses with my ex-wife. has been divorced 40 years, and she's living here. We're all three sharing the expenses. Not equally, by the way. Uh, I went ahead and ordered for him. He's going to pay me back for this uh, Fire 10-inch tablet. Uh the shower head, by the way, I'm not allowed to do <laughs> Amazon reviews anymore. They removed hundreds of my reviews. No notice was given to me. No reason was given to me. They just disappeared. I didn't know they even disappeared until somebody said, your reviews aren't there anymore. And I went, yeah, they're not there anymore. Then I tried to see if I could uh, upload a new review, and they wouldn't let me. So I guess I was a bad boy in some way. Uh, but this shower head really works out uh, uh, really well. I don't see it showing the price here, but anyway. Uh, this gaming, this would work out well for the uh, this stand holder. I mentioned this the other day. Um, it's plastic. It's light. It, it doesn't, you know, it's just falls over, gets knocked over, or whatever. So, uh, by the way, let me do that now. Uh, let's see, lower third. If you're uh, purchasing, if you're going to buy something, uh, please go to this uh, URL you see there at the bottom, Amazon.com, shop, HNBBS, uh, because if you go there, there are, you'll find some items. If you buy one of those items, I get a commission. doesn't cost you anything. Uh, but while you're there, if you don't decide to buy anything that's on the screen there, just go just do a search there, and whatever you pull up and buy, I get a commission. Uh, last month, oh, let me, let's see. Last month, I... Uh, let me go ahead and remove this, by the way, the lower third. That's one thing I'll be doing is adding a few of these so when I'm doing this video, I can pop these things up and uh, bring some information to you. But uh, let me go to earnings. And uh, let's see, payment history. Last month, I made $3.96 by people clicking. And the month before that, I made uh, $16.74. And the month before that, I made uh, $79.29. And that, as you can see, that's the, and I've been signed up for, with uh, Amazon since 2009 and that 70 that one month uh, a couple months ago was the uh, my big month and I know a longtime viewer uh, purchased some stuff and said hey I used your link and that was it and uh, so but anyway if you could uh, Please, I know it's inconvenient, you know, if you can 
paste that link someplace. Uh, oh, man. Okay. Maybe I need to go to... I have a bunch of microphones around here, by the way. Somebody left a comment the other day from a video that I made several years ago about microphones or headsets. That was it. And uh, he reported me, too, and, and he mentioned a piece of software or whatever. You know, I have... I don't know how many. Did you hear my stomach growl? I made a video, I don't know, a year ago or two years ago or whatever. And uh, you could hear it in the video. Somebody said, made a comment. I heard the guy's stomach growling. Uh, anyway, I, with, my, with these microphones, the, uh, well, one thing is a lot of them you have to, be talking right into the microphone, uh, and I don't want to do I don't want to do that. Have half my face covered by the microphone, but uh, I even have dual microphones. I have dual microphone stands, all kinds of stuff. But in the past, I would I would forget that I had the problem and uh, do that, and sound from my videos would only be coming out of the left speaker or something like that when you were listening. So maybe I need to try to get back and get it fixed. Maybe that's something I should be looking at. An external, well, I have some. An external sound card. Maybe a different one that uh, where I could control. Anyway, uh, yeah, if you can, use the... Um, use the link... Let's go take a look at um, YouTube. By the way, uh, YouTube mentioned something the other day um, that I haven't seen any comment on by other YouTubers, which I'm surprised. They announced that they're going to do a limited study. They're going to take YouTube producers. I have 2,500 subscribers. They're going to take YouTube subscribers that have a million or more, <coughs> a million or more subscribers, and they are going to, for a limited time, they're going to have a shelf. And this is first. I didn't know understand. I could understand from the context. Um, so when you're at, when you go to YouTube, there's going to be. Maybe there already is, because I don't think it's going to be, they're testing, going to test it. There's going to be a shelf, and videos from those YouTubers who have more than a, thousand, more than a million subscribers, they will be featured uh, on the shelf. And I'm surprised that other YouTubers aren't raising, getting upset about that. I mean, the other shelves will still be there. But it's going to be, I think, one at the top. And because, and I can understand YouTube that way, the people who have hope more than a million should already be sort of uh, checked out. And then, two, you'll have this limited number, so you can actually have a physical employee looking at the videos to make sure they're okay and whatever. But I'm surprised that more little YouTubers aren't screaming and hollering. Because what we've found out is, uh, and what the statistics show, uh, you know, like you're, some of you are following me, <clears throat> some of you get notices, some of you actually don't get notices, we know now, from YouTube, even though you have clicked, hey, I want to uh, see Jim Howard's videos, let me know when he, you know, does one, you don't always get notified. Um you know, but that may be on YouTube. You don't always get notified. If you're following me on Facebook or Twitter, you probably it does probably show up that Jim Howard made a new video. But what we found out is, at so far as YouTube is concerned, if you start a YouTube channel or, well, I've been with YouTube since they started, 2005. I was one of the original people. I was doing streaming video before there was a YouTube. Um, 
But what we know now is when you go to just go to YouTube, whatever YouTube shows on their main screen or whatever, that's where people go. Um, if you're a new YouTuber or somebody that has 2,500 subscribers and somebody someplace says, I've heard of a place called YouTube and they go to YouTube, you're not going to get a, 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 you know, you're not going to get things going to pop up. Uh, Jim Howard uh, made a video talking about Manicam or Jim Howard's been talking about unions or you just won't see it. You're just going to see the gigantic sites you'll get notices about them that have million, you know, millions of subscribers. Those things will pop up. The only other thing that might pop up would be if a video goes really, you know, if somebody uploads, a, some little guy uploads a video and then all of a sudden, but that's, how's that going to happen, you know? If I uploaded something that was, uh, should go viral for some reason, I don't know, you know? D.D. the cat comes in and devours a YouTuber, devours my ear or attacks me or something bizarre. Uh, so uh, if you're a little, if you're a person just starting out, it's just about impossible to move up. Like I said, I've been, of course, my videos are not that good. For a certain group, of, there's, of course, there's always, no matter who you are, uh, you'll run, you may run across somebody and you really like their video. There's a guy that's a pilot. I forget. Uh, he's a pilot and he's a private pilot also, of course. And he's got a, a boy that's six years old or whatever that he's kind of teaching to, you know, keep your hands on. And to what he does, he must have an engineering background because uh, when there was a train accident, he gave the best information about it that I saw, better than CNN and all that type of stuff. He knew where to pull up the information. He knew, and there was a plane crash, or a, I don't think it was a bad crash. It was, anyway, he does, uh, so he undoubtedly has an engineering background, and he explains things really well, and pulls up the data. So you'll find people uh, here. I think what a lot of us, I know what I'm doing, I know a lot of us are doing is now before I buy something, I always check on YouTube. And if I want to know how to do something, I pull up, I go and do a search on YouTube and pull it up. So anyway, this looks to me like it work, looks uh, works pretty well. Manicam, my two cameras, and uh, I can also live stream with this. I've, I did it, but now that I've adjusted things a little bit better, so maybe I should start live stream. I've thought about that maybe I should start live streaming, and it'd be good to have a schedule. But on the other hand, maybe I should just live scream, scream, live scream. Uh, by the way, I watch the uh, Twit Network a lot. Echo, play Twit Live. Twit Live from Jim's Tune In. Well, apparently they're not, they're probably sitting there getting ready to do a show or just did a show because they're quiet. You can go there and see live, you know, the cameras run and then they start their shows. And Three, two. Sound this fun. is Windows PC with Paul Garrod and Mary Jo Foley. Uh, that's just funny. Yep. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. 
episode number 568, recorded Wednesday, May 2nd, 2018. Paul saves the window store. Do that again. Three, two. This is Windows Weekly, episode number... No. Let's see. Quit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode number 568, recorded Wednesday, May 5th. That's not May 5th, it's May 2nd. I'm having issues, whichever be. I have concerns. Three, two. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode number five. And then we've got Wednesday, May 2nd, Billboards. All saves the windows. Uh, Rocket and. So there you go. Echo off. Yeah, I recommend uh, Twit. Uh, I watch the Android, and too you can do, you know you can go watch some stuff live, but you can go and you can pick uh, the shows you want to watch when you want to, and then you can stop and you can come back. I watch Windows Weekly. I think it's on Wednesdays. Maybe I'm not sure. And uh, Google. They're on weekly. And let's see. They list their stores. Stores? Uh, there's uh, the Jesuit priest. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I missed this week's uh, Windows Weekly. Okay, I have to say uh, three Our Fathers and three Hail Marys and say the Rosary. In a way, um, I thank you very much for watching. I'm going to, my stomach is, I think, stopped growling for some reason or else I'm not. I'm going to go find something to eat. And it's uh, almost, it's 1.15 a.m. I am uh, going to upload this to uh, YouTube. Let me know by thumbs up if you like it or if you don't like it. Uh, if you have any recommendations. If you want to hear anything specific, if you have any questions, uh, make them easy questions. Uh, <laughs> nothing too technical. Uh, you know, I have trouble, I don't have a VCR, but I have trouble, uh, you know, so make it an easy question. If you have any questions about anything, leave it. Uh, don't expect a you know, back in the old BBS days, before the World Wide Web, that was great. When I ran the computer bulletin board system, people would call in from all over the United States. Uh, they might leave a question on the message board. And you didn't get it, you know, it'd be somebody be dial back in the next day or a couple of days later, and somebody would have someplace logged in, would have answered your question. Ah, oh, the good old days. Thank you very much for watching.